El Greco was a 16th century Greek artist who, after moving to the city of Toledo in Spain, created some of his most well-known works, one of them being St. Martin and the Beggar, painted between 1597 and 1599. He's commonly accredited with helping to define Spanish Renaissance with his art. After being commissioned for the chapel of San Jose, El Greco decided to depict the famous story of the fourth century Roman soldier who divided his cloak and gave half of it to a shivering beggar in the middle of winter. Looking into the lines and geometry, as well as the imagery used, we will find that there is a very present tension in the painting. Uh, this tension ultimately refers to the struggle of human nature and longing to be a part of that which is greater than ourselves, yet remaining unsatisfied with the earthly realm. The dominant shape of the painting forms the letter A, as there are two main diagonal lines, one coming from St. Martin's head down his right shoulder and to the beggar's elbow, and the other one coming from St. Martin's head and down through the bridle of the horse to its mouth. The horizontal of the letter A, of course, is the segment that perfectly aligns the eyes of the beggar and the eyes of the horse. This horizontal line connecting the two suggests that they are related somehow. By looking at their physical characteristics, we know that this is so because firstly, neither really has clothing, and secondly, because they have very similarly structured legs, as they are the same in length and boniness. We can conclude from the physical connections of the eyes, chest area, and legs that the relationship between beggar and beast is on the horizontal level. This is no accident because it suggests their earthliness, as the horizontal line is an image of time and things created. However, at the same time, the line connecting the beggars and St. Martin's eyes also shows that they are connected in some way. The difference with this connection is that the line connecting beggar and beast relates physical placement, whereas this line connects vision, as the beggar's gaze is directed upward towards St. Martin. We can already see the tension in the painting. On one hand, there's a relationship between beggar and beast, and on the other hand, a relationship between beggar and saint. Where the beggar and the horse have much in common, he and St. Martin seem to be opposite in physical appearance. Where the beggar has no clothes, St. Martin is fully clothed in what would suggest he has both rank and power. We see that there is another diagonal line at the hands, as they are both holding one half of the cloak. Studying the image of the cloak, we come to realize that it becomes the object of an act of compassion. Because of this, St. Martin's dress isn't so much to show his worldly dominance over others, but rather to lend in showing a different kind of transcendence. Even in his physical placement in the painting do we see this, as he is above the city in the bottom right corner. This elevated position indicates more his being in the heavenly or supernatural realm, as he is placed in a plane of predominantly blue and white. He is fully armored to symbolize that he has power, but again, this kind of power is what enables him to raise others out of their lowliness. The lace around his neck and wrist suggests his wealth, but once again, this is the wealth of having God present in the simplest acts of love. In conclusion, we see the tension of El Greco's painting by its lines and geometry, which is soon supported by the imagery used to show the relationship between two creatures, but also the relationship between a creature and a saint. As all great works of art show tension, we see in St. Martin and the Beggar the struggle to become part of something greater, but finding no satisfaction by earthly means.